Good day grade 11s, welcome to this last lesson in week 22. In this lesson we've been, in this week we've been teaching you mainly about Coulomb's law and in this lesson we're going to join the Mindset Learn team as they teach us how to cope with Coulomb's law in questions that are in 2D, in other words in two dimensions. So let's join them now. <laughs> Hello grade 11s and welcome to this third lesson in the electrostatics topic. We have already learned that Coulomb's law is used to calculate the force on two charged objects. Coulomb's law states that the electrostatic force between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. The equation based on Coulomb's law states that F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. We know how to do calculations in which there are either two or three charges placed in a straight line. In this lesson, we will calculate the resultant electrostatic force on a charged object when there are three charges positioned in two dimensions. This means that they are not in a straight line. Let us have a look at an example like this. Three point charges are placed in close proximity to one another in a vertical plane. The charges and distances between them are shown. What is the resultant electrostatic force on Q2 as a result of the other two charges? Before we start this question, we'll draw a free body diagram for the forces on Q2. Q1 and Q2 are oppositely charged, so Q1 exerts an upward force on Q2. We name this force F1. Q2 and Q3 are oppositely charged, so Q3 exerts a horizontal attractive force on Q2. We name this force F2. The question asks for the resultant electrostatic force on Q2 as a result of the other two charges. We first use Coulomb's law to calculate the electrostatic force, F1. To calculate the force on Q2 as a result of Q1, we substitute the charge into the equation. This gives us F1 as 4,08 times 10 to the negative 7 newtons. This force acts upwards, since the charges are in a vertical plane. Then we use Coulomb's law to calculate F2, the force of Q3 on Q2. The direction of F2 is horizontal towards Q3. Let us now go back to our free body diagram showing the forces that are being experienced by Q2 as a result of Q1 and Q3. The two forces act at 90 degrees to one another, so the resultant force can be calculated using trigonometry. Can you calculate the magnitude of the resultant force? We use Pythagoras' theorem. We substitute the values of F1 and F2 into the equation and find that F squared is 2,56 times 10 to the minus 14. To calculate the magnitude of the resultant force, we get the square root, which is 5,06 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons. Then we calculate the direction of the resultant force. Let us choose the angle between F2 and the resultant. We use the trig function tan to solve for theta. Use the second function tan button on your calculator to solve for the angle. Theta works out to be 53,67 degrees. So the resultant force on Q2 is at 53,67 degrees to the horizontal force. There are quite a lot of calculations involved in a question of this nature. Try this one on your own. Three point charges are placed in close proximity to one another in a vertical plane. The charges and distances between them are shown here. What is the resultant electrostatic force on Q2 as a result of the other two charges? After substituting in the values of Q2 and Q1, did you get this answer for the force due to Q1? Then we calculate the attractive force due to Q3. And the resultant of the two forces is 8, 0.52 times 10 to the negative 2 newtons. The direction of the resultant force is minus 41,38 degrees downwards from the horizontal force F2. Now we solve for theta using the trig function. 
the direction of the resultant force is 41,38 degrees to F2. Thank you for joining me in today's lesson on Coulomb's law for charges in two dimensions. I hope you found that very useful, grade 11s. It is slightly tricky to understand and do these questions. Um, I would suggest that you re-watch the video and pause between, before each question or as each question is presented and then try and solve it for yourself and then check that you're getting it right. Um, once you've made sure that you understand this, please go do the questions in the assessment in the Turnable system. Um, and then, yeah, make sure you understand. Have a great day.